Let's start the show by talking about my new sponsor, Paloma Verde Store. Head over to PalomaVerdeStore.com for all of your CBD needs. They've got the CBD gummies, topicals, the salve, sports cream, soft gels, the tinctures. They've even got pet products. I love this stuff. Having gone to a night shift recently and having trouble sleeping during the day, it helps mellow me out and put me right down whenever I need to get some sleep for the day so I'll be refreshed for my night shift. And Carlos and his wife Vanessa are awesome people, so I highly recommend go over and check out PalomaVerdeStore.com for all of your CBD needs. And when you get there, if you enter in the promo code FACTS, you get 25% off anything in the store. Plus, if you sign up for the email, you get an additional 10% off. So that's potentially 35% off on your first order. And all orders over $75 are free shipping. So go over to PalomaVerdeStore.com and check it out. This episode will be completely taken out of context. Welcome to the Fact Check This Podcast. All right, Fact Check This Podcast, episode 60, and I'm back on the desktop today. I didn't, I don't know, for some reason the, the audio wasn't picking up as well as I would have liked on the on the laptop. I think I'm, I think something's not, uh, I think it's trying to pick up on both the laptop mic and the podcast mic simultaneously and it's making it sound funny anyway i'm gonna tinker with it and, and get that figured out and then i'll be back to doing the the uh laptop because i really do like the the video quality of that one a whole lot better and it's nice to be able to move around change angles with this thing it's kind of big and uh, so i'm kind of stuck right where it sits uh, at least for the most part i think i can i can move around a little bit but not a whole lot Today I'm going to focus on some uh, more local, like Indiana specific topics. Uh, they're really, as far as I've, I don't know, if I've missed something, you know, if there's something that I should be talking about, let me know, but I, I just haven't seen a whole lot in the news cycle since the, show, the Chauvin trial ended. It's just kind of been a flat week, like there was the Oscars, but who gives a shit about the Oscars? Obviously nobody since ratings were down like 58% and the lowest viewership ever uh <laughs> which is a beautiful thing like we should collectively not be paying any attention to anything any of those dumb fucks have to say ever like they don't live in the real world but then they try to preach to everybody about how you should be more more like them yeah, I, I wish I was more like them in the terms of being a multi-millionaire. And beyond that, they can fuck right off. So, <laughs> obviously I'm still waking up a little bit. Let me grab a sip of this coffee and let's get after it. Alright, so the first thing I wanted to hit on was, uh, I posted an article yesterday. It's Holcomb versus the legislature. So, um, the Indiana General Assembly... Uh, <clears throat> they gave themselves the authority to call an emergency session in order to address the, the governor's emergency authority. So Holcomb basically just declared himself God King of Indiana, like many other governors did around this time last year. And he disbanded the, the legislature. He, they, weren't, they weren't allowed to come back in session uh, because of his executive orders. So he effectively neutered the entire uh, democratic process here in Indiana through executive order, which is, I mean, that is what a tyrant does. That's what a tyrant does. There is a elected general assembly that represents the people of all the different parts of the state, and they're the ones who are supposed to actually govern. And he's just supposed to sit at the top and be like the... The manager of it all and he just nixed everything he nixed the entire process and declared himself ruler supreme and so the general assembly uh they passed hea 1123 which gives them the authority to call an emergency session in that event to prevent him from doing such a thing and now he's He's suing the General Assembly to uh, to have that over overturned. Poor, poor little Eric 
got butt hurt when they told him, no, you can't just go be a tyrant and run around and do whatever the fuck you want. And so now he's suing them to try to... See, this son of a bitch should be impeached and thrown out on this alone. Uh, obviously, he got a taste of what it's like to be the king, and he doesn't want to give that up. Uh, which that's been blatantly evident throughout everything. Uh, he has, for the entirety of COVID, done whatever the fuck he wants, ignored everything that actually pertains to the science and the data and the realism of what's going on with everything. Uh, he, he just does whatever he wants. And if you go back, and if you haven't, if you're not from Indiana and didn't keep up with it, go find the 2020 Indiana gubernatorial debates where the Libertarian con candidate Donald Rainwater just absolutely massacred Eric Holcomb. And there was a Democrat there too, and he never said anything uh, worthwhile anyway. But, but like, Holcomb, Holcomb looked like a full-blown liberal for the entirety of those debates. Like, everything that Republicans claim to believe in and stand for and want from a governor and from their government, this dude just, like, he went, you know, turned it all on its head and went full Democrat. Like, do you, do you believe in lower taxes? You shouldn't be voting for Republicans in Indiana. Do you believe in the Second Amendment? And Second Amendment, you should not be voting for Democrat or for Republicans in Indiana. At every turn, they have proven that they don't actually care about any of the topics that supposedly are important to conservative Republican voters in the state of Indiana. Holcomb is a just a beautiful example of everything that's wrong with the Republican Party on a national level. We get to see it all right here, where the party claims to be about certain things, and their base will not wake up and look at the fact that these motherfuckers don't actually do anything to support or promote the things they claim to be supporters of. I mean, they are playing you for dumbasses, and you're allowing it. You're allowing it. They quit voting for these cocksuckers. Absolutely no incumbents. There, there should not be uh, maybe, maybe two, maybe three. There are a couple that are pretty good here in Indiana. Not, but not a whole lot. Do not re-elect any of these motherfuckers. Don't elect any, re-elect any of them. If they're running as an incumbent, vote against them. I would prefer that you vote for a libertarian, but if you vote for a Democrat, it doesn't matter. Like, the argument, the argument, okay. See, this, this fucking kills me. The argument against voting for Donald Rainwater in for a governor last year was that if we vote for Rainwater, the Democrat's going to win. The Democrat is already fucking in office. Eric Holcomb is a full-on Democrat. He is a Republican in name only. The definition of the fucking rhino. He does absolutely nothing to promote conservative, conservative values. Like, how much more blatantly obvious can it be? He, he is doing everything he can to keep himself in power and to make sure that he is the Lord Tyrant of Indiana. I, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any fucking sense to me how people think, uh, well, I can't vote for the Libertarian because the, then the Democrats are going to win. When the Democrats are already in fucking office. He's already there. Uh, you have been played. Two sides of the same coin. Right and left wing of the same bird. They are the exact fucking same. There is no difference between the two. They might get out and posture and play and pretend that they are different. 
But at the end of the day, they're not. And and people talk about the... So, so I have even talked about it before. Like, the left comes up with the rules, and then the right tries to play by the rules, and then the left breaks the rules, and then the right gets mad because the left broke the rules. But the left never gave a shit about the rules to begin with. And that is happening right here in Indiana right now. Only it's the Demo or the Republicans that are doing it. God, I keep getting them mixed up because they are exactly the fucking same. Like, you may as well just call them them. Because that's what they are. It's them. There is no Democrat. There is no Republican. It's just them. They are all fucking corrupt and they are all terrible. But, so, so one of the other things that we've got going on is the, uh, the Indiana Secretary of State candidates, both... Both. There are two Republican Secretary of State candidates. And both of them declared too early and started asking for donations too early. I'm running for a local, just a small local position here in the county in 2022. And I have turned down campaign donations because I cannot accept them. It would be illegal at this point. I cannot even advertise for donations. All I've done is create a Facebook page, and I, I've got to file like paperwork and stuff to form an exploratory committee so I can set up an account and start uh, getting funding and stuff. But you can't, you can't declare and start taking campaign funding. Both of the Republicans have already done it. They are breaking the campaign law that they supposedly set. And like obviously. They make the rules so they don't have to abide by them. That way, everybody who is who believes in rules and who believes in playing by the rules is hampered by the rules. That's what it is. That's what it comes down to. I, I posted this article the other day, but... Uh, and the, the, the way that the... So, there's something that's not probably not really uh, understood or known about the way campaigning works. You are infinitely more likely to win as an incumbent. Like getting in that first time and getting elected for that first time, that's tough. That's really tough. Like you, you fight an uphill battle. If you can get in and get elected for that first time, then your name is on the ballot. You are the incumbent. You kind of have that name value. And even if you don't have that, you know, that name brand value, you're already, you're in there, you're established, like, you have been there before. So, it, I can't remember what the exact number is, it's like, you're, you're like 60 to, 60 to 70 percent more likely to be, uh, to win your election as an incumbent than as a, than to just come in off the street. And so, so the Republicans cheat in this manner as well. Uh, and I don't know where it originated. I really need to look that up. But at some point in the past, the Secretary of State resigned early. And so the governor gets to appoint a new one to replace the one that resigned. And they're only allowed to serve for X amount of time. So what you run into is now... So now the, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, uh, the one who's running for Secretary of State, who is sitting as the incumbent, has never won an election. She was appointed to that position, but now she gets to run for re-election. See, and there's the, there's the kicker. She was never elected to begin with, but she gets to run for re-election. She gets to sit as the incumbent. She gets to reap all the advantages of having won before without having actually won before. And the Republicans have got it rigged this way for the Secretary of State in particular. And Secretary of State is a ballot access uh, position in the state of Indiana. So for Libertarians, if we get a certain percent of the vote in the Secretary of State race, then that keeps us on the ballot as a minor party. If we can get a, an even larger percent of the vote, we can become a major party. Any state or any county within Indiana where the Libertarian Party places either first or second in the Secretary of State uh, 
election, we get a seat on the election board. In fact, this is a fun, fun fact. If we get first or second in any of those counties in the Secretary of State race, whichever of the two major parties comes in third, be it Republican or Democrat, and, and we're talking about Indiana, so in all likelihood it'd be de the Democrat, they lose their seat on the election board for that county. So, so we can push Democrats out. Uh, if you want, if you want to really get rid of Democrats in the state of Indiana, vote Libertarian across the board and get them off of all of the election boards. It's really, it's really that easy. Uh, but, but so the Secretary of State position is is the is the one that you know it's the ballot access position, and they rig it every time. They every time because the Secretary of State can only serve for whatever it is, eight years, or, uh, the, the one who was appointed, her term will expire because she will, she will have served for her entire duration that she's allowed to before the next election comes up. So she'll resign because she's at the, termed out. They'll appoint a new one. And then the new one gets to run for re-election. So they run for re-election in perpetuity, even though they never get elected the very, very first time. They're always running for re-election. It's a rigged fucking game, and nobody wants to point it out. Nobody wants to do anything about it. Instead, instead, all you Hoosiers want to keep voting for these same motherfuckers that have rigged the game, just so they can continue to fuck you over. Because you, like, you do realize there have been uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 tax hikes throughout COVID, like, as they've locked you down and forced you into submission, they have continued to raise your taxes. So, I don't, I don't get it. I really need somebody, and I've been asking for this since fuck, September, I really need somebody to come on here and defend these spineless cuck Republicans who don't do a goddamn thing to actually promote the things that they claim they stand for. Please, enlighten me as to what I'm missing. What have they actually done for you other than fuck you over and pretend pretend that they're not every bit as bad as the Democrats. I, I would argue that the Republicans are actually worse. Because at least the Democrats are straight up with you. They hate you and they want to fuck your life up. They come right out and say it, more or less. You know, you know where you stand with them. The Republicans pretend to be on your side just so they can stab you in the back repeatedly. That's infinitely worse in my book. I'd These sons of bitches have got to go. 2022 would be a good place to start. Let's get after it. Let's get rid of them. That'll do it for today's episode. There's not going to be a part two or anything like that. It's just going to be a little one straight shot. I've gone long enough anyway, I think. Um, as I mentioned at the top of the show, well, for the, those of you watching on Facebook, not at the top of the show, but for everybody else, as I mentioned at the top of the show, go check out Paloma Verde's store. And get all your CBD needs. I'm actually about to drop a gummy and take a nap. Um, what else? I'll be doing a couple of interviews this weekend. I hope that's the plan. So one of them is going to focus on the Chauvin trial and the verdict and all of that fun stuff. And the other one is going to just be a random uh, conversation <laughs> that I think will be a lot of fun. They're tasty, too. Yep, that'll do it. Hope everybody has it going. I'll catch you next week.